Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? I got another Project Euler problem for you here today, number 9. This is the special Pythagorean triplet. We're still doing this in C. A Pythagorean triplet is a set of three natural numbers, a less than b less than c, for which a squared plus b squared equals c squared. For example, 3 squared plus 4 squared is 9 plus 16, which equals 25 equals 5 squared. There exists exactly one Pythagorean triplet for which a plus b plus c equals 1000. Find the product of these three, a, b, c, or a times b times c. Now this one's not that bad, it's, it's also a pretty short one, which these will continue to be for at least until maybe problem 11 or so, they start getting a little bit harder, but we'll start doing this, spawn my notepad. But this one's really, it's not that bad, it's pretty short as you'll see. We're gonna have our one standard include here for the input output header, because we want to print our answer. I'm gonna go with int main today, instead of our edgy f void friend, yeah. Um, not, not too many variable declarations. There'll be a few. We're gonna have A, B, and C, as you can see from the problem. We're gonna have a sum. Um, we're gonna have a product. Get the product of that sum. Well, the product of the three that make the sum. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put in A squared, B squared, and C squared. Just to make it easier to follow along. You don't really need those three, I don't think, if you want to write it a, a little bit different way, but that just it helps visualize it, makes it a bit easier. That being said, we're going to initialize pretty much everything to zero except for the sum. A, a squared. B squared. Equals C squared. We're going to set them all to zero, because because why not? I'm sure it makes people mad that I initialize variables like that. <laughs> it just looks dumb. But I don't know. I like doing it. We're going to initialize the sum to 1,000. If you want to make the sum different later on, you can, but for this problem, it's 1,000. Alright, we're basically just going to have a couple nested loops here. An outer and an inner four with a check. But the outer four we're going to do for A equal to 1 to start off. A less than one third of the sum, or sum divided by 3, which I'm going to go over this in one, one little second here. And a plus plus. For the inner sum, we're going to loop through the inner loop, rather. We're going to loop through b. We're going to have for b equal to 2. b less than half the sum, or sum divided by 2. And increment it b plus plus. Now the reason I'm doing this, one looping through a and b, you don't need to loop through c. But also, the reason I'm starting at a equals 1 and b equal to 2 is because a has to be less than b, which has to be less than c. So at a minimum, with these three natural numbers we have, like the lowest we can go would be a is 1 and b is 2. For it to satisfy the, the problem condition here. So that's the reason for that. The second thing is, why, why am I using sum divided by 3 and sum divided by 2 here? For the, the a and b limits for the loops. Well, if we take our problem a plus b plus c equal to 1,000, um, I'm just going to rewrite it here. Equal to 1,000. You have the three numbers and they equal some arbitrary sum. Um, and for this to be true, and for them to be, for a to be less than b to be less than c to be true, then a cannot be greater than one third. And the reason for this is if you try to write it out, like for this problem, uh, we have 1,000 for the sum, right? If a was one third of 1,000, which is about 300, 333 and three repeating, we'll just say 333. For b to be, because they're natural numbers, they have to be whole numbers. For b to be greater than a, at a minimum, it has to be 334. And c greater than b, 335. This does not equal 1,000. This is 1,002, it does not specify does not uh, make our, our problem correct, we cannot have that as the answer. Now if you reduce a by 1, if a is 332, it is less than 1 third. b can be 333, c can be 334, and this will equal, I believe, 999. So that will make it true. If we wanted to equal 1000, c would be 335, is the only thing that could satisfy that. But you cannot have a equaling 1 third, at a minimum it has to be less, like right under 1 third, so that is why we're having the limit there. 
Now B being less than one half is a similar thing. Because if B were one half, it would not it would not be correct. If B were one half, C has to be greater than B. So at a minimum, it would be 501 for this problem, which would make the answer 1001. It would not be true. However, if B were 499, C could be 500. And then A subsequently would be 1. And that would satisfy our problem condition. So that's... That's a somewhat roundabout way to say A has to be less than a third of the sum and B has to be less than one half of the sum for our our answer to be true. Problem condition to be to be solved, satisfied. So hopefully you understood that. Try to make it simple. Uh, within this inner loop, we can finally initialize C, which we haven't done yet. We're gonna have it be the sum, subtracting B, subtracting A. Because I like to go large to small, helps me visualize it better. But if you take A plus B, plus C equal to a thousand, then you just switch around and solve for C and you can get this, the sum, or in this case, 1000 minus B minus A at this point. Then we're gonna initialize our squared variables. So A squared being A times itself and the same for B and C. B times B, C squared equaling C times C. And then now that we have everything, everything set by this point, pretty much, we can do our check. We have the squares of the variables, so we can see if those squares are equal to the Pythagorean theorem condition we have. So if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then that is true. And since this problem is clearly stated, there is exactly one Pythagorean triplet. Once we've found our Pythagorean triplet, then we're done with the problem, because only one exists for these three, A, B, and C, under a thousand, which is our sum. So at this point, we have our answer. I'm just gonna print out what they are. I'm gonna print out A, B, and C, just because I'm curious. We're gonna get the product, which equals A times B times C. A times B times C, and then we can print out the product, and that will be our answer. Product. And then we'll put a nice little return zero, just to clean up the code at the end, even though it should be all right, we're just gonna do that anyway. I don't really need this space here, but I'm gonna leave it. So that should be all we need to do for this problem to get the answer here. So you bring up the PowerShell, compile, looks like it compiled all right, which is good. <laughs> and there we go, we get 200 for A, 375 for B, 425 for C, and we get our answer, the product of those three, 31875000, which is this answer. So there you go, it's a pretty short problem, that's how you solve it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed, hope it was, you know, clearly understandable, if you did, awesome. If you didn't, that's fine. Next time, we're going to go over problem 10, which is the summation of primes. I hope to see you then. But have a good day. I'll see you later.